welcome to the Trafford Center in Manchester for the show that asks the top professionals what you should be spending your money on. I'm Cherry Healy, and throughout this series, I've been traveling the country, asking the UK's leading experts to help you shop like a pro. So where better to end our retail odyssey than here, one of the UK's largest shopping centers. Tonight, we're putting one of the biggest selling appliances of last year to the test. We spent 191 million pounds on cordless vacuums. But are they worth it? There are lots of little biscuit particles still in the carpet. Yeah, if anything, on some of it, it's actually broken out further. Coffee machines have never been more popular. But can the cheapest ones compete with those at the top of the range? I would be gutted if I had to drink that every day. Also on the programme, reporter Naga Manchetti channels Top Gun to discover how robust modern luggage is. Oh, dear. And more industry insight with our tricks of the trade. If you want the inside track on the latest products from the people really in the know, then look no further. This is What to Buy and Why. With over 2 million square feet of retail dining and leisure space, Manchester's Into Trafford Centre is the biggest of its kind in the northwest. Each year, more than 30 million people come here to spend their hard earned cash in more than 200 outlets. And tonight, we're offering more top tips to ensure that you leave places like this with stuff that's really worth having. All right. First up, an appliance that's been a must-have in every home for decades. But long gone are the days of lugging about a heavy beast like this. Vacuum cleaners have gone space age. Yeah, now I'm gonna be 22. The latest innovation is the cordless machine. They're extremely popular, with sales going up by 75% last year. They may be selling by the bucket load, but do they do a good enough job to guarantee value for money? To find out, I've enlisted the help of the Good Housekeeping Institute. Verity Mann is the deputy head of consumer testing. So cordless vacuum cleaners, they seem almost too good to be true. They're extremely convenient, but there are some issues still that people do talk about, such as the battery life not being long enough, um, and also the suction, um, whether it's as good as a full-size vacuum. So to find out just how well they perform, we're going to test three models from across the price range. The Hoover Flexi Power, the Vax Air, and the most expensive we could find, the Dyson V6 Total Clean. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's a mall. There's no carpet to Hoover. Don't worry. We're on it. I went everybody's head about the bird. The bird, bird, bird. The bird's a winner. Well, the bird, bird, bird. The bird is a winner. Well, the bird, bird, bird. Well, the bird is a winner. Carpet laid. Time to add a sprinkle of special ingredients. Healthy amounts of cereal, crumbs, and that old vacuuming nemesis, pet hair. How will each of our three machines cope? Let the suction commence. I've got two kids. This is a regular occurrence in my house. So let's see how it does. Let's go. The cereal is quite big, so relatively quickly. Is that full? So it's already full. It's true. It's pushed a lot of it forward and backwards as opposed to actually suctioning it up, which isn't good. Should we empty the, the cylinder? Yeah, let's give it a go. Lift it up. It does feel like the container is very small. Yeah, that's the problem with a lot of stick vacuums. The capacities aren't brilliant. I mean, it was very lightweight and easy to manoeuvre around, but it really did push the, the debris out of the squares. Next, the Vax. This costs over £100 more and is closer in design to a regular-sized upright vacuum. That is just so much better. It's got a much, much bigger capacity. The brush bar, you can tell it's really helped suction up, but it is noticeably heavier than the previous yes. model. 
And finally, the Dyson. It too is a stick design, but has a much more powerful engine. Although once again, a smaller capacity than the Vax. That is full. One easy empty though, and Verity is back on track. Power seems amazing. I mean, you could just feel it when it was on the carpet. It had a really good suction onto it. And how lightweight is it to use? Oh, it feels far more lightweight than the others. More flexible as well. Crumbs. It's round two. OK, so there are lots of little biscuit particles still in the carpet. Yeah, if anything, on some of it, it's actually broken out further and made it a bit more embedded. Will the Vax fare any better? Still brown some bits into the pile slightly. Yes. Um, but all, yeah, not too bad. And finally, the Dyson. OK. Again, the best out of the three, without a shadow of a doubt. That is a good result there, yeah. But how will they cope with round three? Pet hair. Yes, it's a tough test. I mean, I don't know what animal's been rolling around on this carpet, but it had some fun. Initially, the hoover does seem to do well. It's when you get to the closer inspection, you can see the strands here and there. I don't know about you, Verity, but I wouldn't be happy with that result. No. How does the Vax get on? That's done well, hasn't it? Yes. It picked it up relatively quickly as well from the start. Yeah. And finally, the Dyson. Very quick and painless. Yeah, that's done well. I'm impressed there. And totally hair-free. Yeah, it felt very easy. The suction, the, the grip it had with the carpet was very impressive. After three tests, is our cheapest machine, the £95 Hoover, a good deal? Well, the power obviously wasn't a brilliant. It hasn't picked up anything perfectly. And it is the cheapest of the range, but it is still nearly £100, so... Still not cheap. So, overall, how do you think our mid-priced vacuum cleaner did? Well, I think it seems to have gotten better the further it's gone along. The debris that it's picking up, like pet hair, it's done really well on. Is our most expensive vacuum, the Dyson at £430, our top choice? So, at this point, which do you think is in the lead? The Dyson. Yeah, it does feel a bit like it. But will it still be the best value after we've put the three machines through our shopping center assault course? Do the batteries last long enough to vacuum your entire house without a recharge? We'll find out later. tricks of the trade now as top industry professionals share their ingenious tips to make the stuff you buy last longer. I'm Amanda. About 10 years ago, I decided to start my own cleaning business. A brilliant way of making your whites whiter and your colours brighter is to use half a cup of bicarbonate soda in your washing machine with your detergent. It's a much cheaper option than any of the specialist colour powders or stain removers that you can buy, and it works every bit as well. I'm Glyn, kit manager for Leeds Rhinos. If you want to keep the colours locked into the clothes, as soon as you bought them, simply add salt to cold water, soak the garments overnight, wash as normal, and this will stop the colours from running. A simple way of getting grease marks out of your shirt collars is to use a bit of shampoo. Put a bit on the, on the edge, rub it in, put it in the washing machine, and it'll come out looking good as new. Still to come. We splashed out £730 million on coffee last year. But how much do you need to spend to recreate that unique barista style at home? But first, more people book holidays at this time of year than any other. 
So which type of suitcase is the best value for money? Naga Manchetti investigates. You might be surprised to know that the contents of the average British holidaymaker's luggage costs more than the cost of the holiday itself. And get this, we often take around two and a half thousand pounds worth of stuff every time we go abroad. So if you're going to be packing precious cargo, what kind of luggage offers the kind of protection you need? Most domestic suitcases are made from one of four types of material. So we've given ourselves a budget of £130 to buy some medium-sized cases made from each type. We have ABS, polycarbonate, polypropylene, and our only soft case, good old-fashioned nylon. To find out which is toughest, we're going to push them to the extreme. First, using the most fragile of all payloads, we're going to recreate the worst possible scenario for your case at the airport. So I'm roughly at the height of a Boeing 747's cargo hold. So it's the perfect place to find out how these suitcases will fare if they were dropped from here. cases are 130 quid. On this evidence, I wouldn't trust any of them to protect my precious things in a major fall. No, there is definitely not one <laughs> box of eggs undamaged in here at all. None of them protected the eggs. The lesson? It seems obvious, but carry your best stuff with you when you fly. So, soft or hard, modern cases aren't impact-proof but do they last? On average, we don't replace our luggage for 10 years, which brings us to our next test. I have this car, I have those cases, it's time to put them through their paces. We want to see how each material withstands a decade's worth of wear and tear. Now, I don't have a time machine, so this will have to do. But we aren't done yet. If the car hasn't pushed our cases to the limit, this certainly will. So, what's the damage? Our ABS case has severe dents, scuffing and cracks, along with a big hole. And although the nylon is structurally intact, it has suffered heavily with rips and tears. But the polypropylene and the polycarbonate proved to be equally durable, surviving with only minor scratches and scrapes. So, in our view, if you want a case that will last, go for the polycarbonate or choose polypropylene. Back in Manchester, it's coffee time. We Brits love it. We drink more than 70 million cups a day and spend 400 pounds each in cafes every year. And this enthusiasm continues at home. One in five households now own a coffee machine. But making the perfect cup of coffee at home can be expensive. Some machines can set you back over 3,000 pounds. But do you really have to spend that much to make your own quality barista-style coffee? Hello. Hello. To help me find out, I've enlisted Paul Mickle Janney, professional coffee consultant and roaster. What are we going to be testing today? Primarily espresso machines that can take your own coffee. What do you need a coffee machine to do well? It needs to have the power to push the water through the coffee. A lot of the money that you're spending is on the pump that drives that water to ooze out all the, all the good stuff that you get from the, from the beans. 
so we can properly put these devices through their paces, I've set up my own cafe right in the middle of the shopping centre. Coffee is a whole series of different flavours that are dissolving into our water. We'll be judging the machines based on how well each creates that professional, diverse taste. Fruity, zesty flavours, there's sort of sugary, roast-like flavours, and we get bitterness in, in coffee as well, and we want a balance of all three of those. And to make sure it's fair, we'll be using the same beans and grinder that Paul has brought from his own roastery. OK, let's make some coffee. We've got three devices to test. The Escasso at £450, the DeLonghi at £180 and a more budget option, the £25 Aeropress. We start with our most expensive, the Ascaso. More switches should be like that. It's like the start of the Millennium Falcon. It's a nice looking machine and there we've got our coffee sort of oozing out. Let's see how this machine's offering goes down with the people of Manchester. There we go. To ensure they're judging the coffee in its purest form, they'll taste it without milk or sugar. I normally have black coffee. So you're used to this kind of taste. And they have no idea this was made by our most expensive machine. What do you think of that? It's quite nice. It's strong. It's slightly <laughs> right. better. Yeah. I don't mind this as a shot first thing in the morning. I do like that one. OK. So what does Paul, our expert barista, think? There's some sweetness in there, but it's a little bit under-extracted. And I would look for a, a deeper texture and flavour out of, out of that coffee. Not a bad start. So on to our next machine. The mid-priced DeLonghi. It doesn't seem to have the same power in the, in the pump to drive it through. I wasn't driving the water through the coffee. Will our coffee-loving Mancunians spot the difference? Very roasty. That one's not good. I think this one's a bit more subtle. It's not the best, that. Not, not your favourite. Sour. That's a sign of under-extraction, that we're not pulling as much as we desire out of the coffee. It's not got the, the sort of more complex, sort of sweeter sort of flavours. Which one tastes more sour? Definitely this one. Uh -huh. Our final option isn't like other coffee machines. It's known as the Aeropress. Essentially, it's like a big syringe, uh, and it pushes the water through the coffee. I've never seen anything like this. Well, let's see how good the let's coffee go. is. Right. That's really okay. the test. The pressure that is exerted by the electric pump is done by our muscles with this one. Slowly and steadily, so the squeeze down. How will our volunteers rate it? That's nice. I like that one. It took a while for the taste to come in. Much better. It's very nice. You don't like that one at yeah. all. What about you? That's probably my favourite one, though. Yeah. A tasty coffee. A little bit more round, a little bit more sweet in, it, in its sort of style there. It's not as sharp as the other ones. That's lovely. Coffee machine that made A is £450. The coffee machine that made B is £180. And the coffee machine that made C is £25. Wow. <laughs> See? So which machine would you spend your money on? C, definitely. I would C. be gutted if I had to drink that every day. <laughs> I would drink that. I think mine would be the £25 <laughs> one. I would still go for the expensive one. I don't think I'd spend £450 for it. I would actually spend on the cheaper one. Probably get the A one. Have we converted you to coffee now? If it was C, yes. Really? Yeah, I think I would take C. Okay. That was so interesting. So even though there's a massive price difference, A and C were kind of neck and neck. It doesn't really surprise me if you're going on flavour alone, C is a great flavoured coffee. I think you've got to spend even more than our top one here to get something that's comparable to your high street espresso. So, in Paul's opinion, none of our machines compete with the high standards set in professional cafes. However, for a high quality caffeine fix, you may not need a traditional coffee machine at all. As the expert, what would you spend your money on? I'd spend £25 on the Aeropress. You're on a winner there. 
tasty coffee. Yeah, go with that one. In response, both Ascaso and DeLonghi point out the versatility of their machines, which both make lattes and cappuccinos as well as espressos. Ascaso defends the quality of the extraction, whilst DeLonghi says the Dedica is designed as a first step into home pump machines. I've drunk so much coffee today that I'm just going to fly back home. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout this series, we've brought you money-saving insights from people who know their industries inside out. And here's our final batch. I'm Naveen. I followed my mum into the business, so you could say I'm a chip off the old block. Roller trays are a pain to clean. People end up leaving them, and they end up like this. To avoid that, get a black plastic bag, put it over your brand new roller tray, and then Pour your paint in there. Voila, your roller tray will stay clean. I'm Will. I'm the French restorer. Before you splash out on a professional cleaner, open up your kitchen cupboard and get out a bottle of white vinegar. It's fantastic at getting out stubborn stains without ruining your upholstery. Apply the vinegar to the fabric with the cloth and work it into the stain. Then clean off with soapy liquid and when it dries, the stain will be gone. I'm Tim. I'm a fourth generation shoemaker and I've been making shoes for the last 30 years. We all wear canvas shoes in the summer. Rather than putting in the washing machine, which can lead to the soles eventually falling off, I prefer to use a dilute solution of washing up liquid or detergent, brush the dirt with an old toothbrush or a nail brush, afterwards wash with plain water, put newspaper on the inside and leave it to dry overnight naturally. I'm Carlos. My parents have run these stalls for as long as I can remember, so I guess fruit and veg are in my blood. If you've got some berries going a bit soft, it's really tempting to throw them away. Don't waste them. Pop them in the freezer and take them out whenever you want and make a delicious smoothie. Back in Manchester, we're getting ready for round two of our cordless vacuum test. Earlier, we discovered that only our most expensive option, the Dyson, could rival the suction power of ordinary plug-in machines. But there's another factor to consider before you buy. When you're plugged into the wall, you are never going to run out of juice. But now the cables have gone, how much vacuuming can you actually do before they conk out? 50% of us say it takes at least half an hour to fully vacuum our house. So are the batteries on these cordless machines able to last that long? To find out, I've recruited three helpers from the Trafford Centre customer service team to go head to head. Joseph will be trying our cheapest, the Hoover Flexi Power. Joe will be using the Vax. And Danielle has the priciest option, the Dyson. Casting her expert eye over proceedings is Verity Mann from the Good Housekeeping Institute. In front of you, you have a living room slalom. You each have a vacuum. Please start your engines. Three, two, one, go! Each is fully charged and will do laps until it can't vacuum no more. This is going to be one clean carpet after this. I would eat my dinner off this carpet. I wouldn't. Yeah, don't blame me. <laughs> yeah, me neither. At first, all three machines suck away very happily, each manoeuvring around our obstacles. Nine minutes. OK. They're still going. going strong. They all still sound quite powerful as well. They really do. I quite like the light on the backs. Yeah, that's good for when you go under furniture and such. Yeah. Not. You can uh, see what's under there. But after a quarter of an hour, our first battery casualty. <laughs> first one to go. The Dyson died. So that was 16 minutes. First one out. 
so our most expensive vacuum is out first. And it's swiftly followed by another. Mine is dead. So the Hoover's gone. Oh. 17 minutes. If most people take over 30 minutes to get round their home, on this evidence, both these vacuums would die before the job's done. And what about how long they each take to recharge? Well, the Hoover takes a whopping 16 and a half hours to charge from empty. Whoa! Followed by the Dyson at three and a half hours. A long time to wait if you're only halfway through. The Vax, however, which is designed to be more like a conventional upright vacuum, has no such issues. The Vax takes three hours. And luckily, it comes with a spare battery, which is quite good. So That's one, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as one runs out, charge it, and you've still got a working vacuum. When it does eventually die after 36 minutes... Gone. After a quick battery swap, we can carry on. Will this ever end? I don't know. I mean, we could be here for a while. Yeah, we should set up camp. I really... Can we get some tea? <laughs> can we get some tea? After our assault course challenge, we have a very clear winner. The Vax is our battery champ. And earlier on, the Dyson was our suction king. So, in the end, which should you buy? Over to Verity for her verdict. What did you think of these machines? What about this one, the cheapest of the three, the Hoover? The Hoover did struggle quite a bit on collecting the different food that we had out, the different debris. Very lightweight and easy to manoeuvre, however. And you can fold the handle down as well, which makes it really compact for storage. But are you really getting value for money? I don't personally think so. I mean, the main point of it is that it does suction up the dirt that's on the floor, and I didn't feel that it did that as best it could. OK, so what about the mid-price vacuum? The Vax, it did do slightly better at collecting debris than the Hoover, but it was just noticeably very bulky, very heavy. It's as big as a full-size vacuum, but the suction power isn't as good. OK, so last but not least, the Dyson. Great suction. It picked up straight away very quickly, almost in its first sweep. You could really feel sort of the grip it had on the carpet as well. And I like the fact that it's got a trigger button, so you're only actually using it when you're needing it, which really preserves the battery. So, after all our tests, which one should you buy and why? Personally, for me, definitely the Dyson. The whole point is they're light, they're convenient, they're quick to push around. I mean, it's a lot of money. There are cheaper models in the Dyson range, which is worth considering, but the suction for them wins hands down. So even though it is more expensive, you still think it's worth the money? Well, that's the thing. It's, you know, they're all not cheap products, but you might as well spend your money on something that's going to actually do its job and be worth the money in the long term. In response, Hoover says the Flexi Power is specifically designed for quick pickups and for cleaning difficult to access places. Vax pointed out that their machine also has a power boost mode designed to improve suction. And Dyson suggested the reason the V6 battery failed after 16 minutes was that our course was 100% carpet, which uses up more power and isn't representative of a typical home. I think in this case, you really get what you paid for and Without a doubt, the Dyson really cleaned up. Agreed. <laughs> That's it from Manchester and for the series. Woo! <laughs> now you know what to buy and why. Hopefully you'll be getting better value for money next time you hit the shops. Next, we're about to witness the Earth's greatest spectacles as Svalbard in the Arctic undergoes its stunning seasonal changes. And at 10, we're mixing and matching with the letter M as Stephen Fry marvels with a mischievous QI panel.